is the PKF Texas Entrepreneur's Playbook. I'm Jen Lemansky and I'm back again with Danielle Supkis-Cheek, a PKF Texas director and one of our certified fraud examiners. Danielle, welcome back to the playbook. Thanks for having me. So in your fraud and forensics practice, I know you work with a lot of not-for-profits. There's fraud and not-for-profit? Unfortunately, yes. One of the risks that nonprofits have is that um, we've, we've done a session before on small businesses mm -hmm. and how small businesses are more susceptible to fraud because of their ability to, in effect, invest in their infrastructure sure. and the size of their resources. It takes it one step further for nonprofits. And the problem is, is that most nonprofits um, are, are not profit maximizing entities by sure. the name, um, but really some kind of social good maximization. Mm -hmm. So most of their money goes toward spending on their mission. Right. Well, Accounting is not usually the mission of most nonprofits, as much as I'd like it to be. Yes. Um, and so what ends up happening is that a lot of metrics for nonprofits on their success are based on the percent spend toward their mission okay. versus what they spend on their admin or actually fundraising as well. But I care most about the admin mm -hmm. for this, this little um, conversation and topic because where you prevent fraud is on IT resources and accounting resources. Okay. And since they're actually theoretically penalized, for investing heavily in IT and accounting infrastructure mm -hmm. because of that percent spend right. um, through lesser donations is the penalty, um, th they tend to go uh, push the limit as far as they can go on cutting costs on overhead and not investing in the technology. And that not, they, a, not a lot of oversight either because a lot of not-for-profits are working with volunteers too. Yes, um, which creates additional risk for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then is it more complicated than for a not-for-profit? Well, accounting for a nonprofit is more complicated than a rank and file business. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that because they're getting donations from either the public, um, like, you know, just mm -hmm. soliciting general sure. donations or a private foundation or even actual the public U.S. government mm -hmm. or a state and local government, there's a certain duty to spend the money that you're receiving for your mission in accordance with the donor stipulations. And so that tracking is wow. actually pretty darn complicated to do, especially on a, a you know, bootstrapped infrastructure mm -hmm. from a, a, a spend perspective. So how would a not-for-profit kind of not necessarily prevent fraud, but eliminate some risk? So there's a lot of things that can be done to eliminate some risk. Key controls around cash, mm -hmm. really tightening down cash, um, using the tracking feature of uh, different accounting softwares and kind of hacking together mm -hmm. various accounting softwares to be able to track those restrictions and actually understanding what's going on in your books and not overcomplicating it for the sake of overcomplicating, mm -hmm. but making sure you're figuring out where that money is actually going, doing your you know best practices, bookkeeping, bank reconciliations, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But the most important is tightening down cash. Um, more so than anything else. Good to know. Well, we'll get you back to talk a little bit more about that. Sure thing. For more about this topic, visit pkftexas.com. This has been another Thought Leader production brought to you by PKF Texas, The Entrepreneur's Playbook. Tune in next week for another chapter.